Ernst and Johanna Lindkis lived in Latvia. This is a commemorative stamp that the Latvian government put out in their honor. When Germany first occupied Latvia in July 1941, pogroms were quickly carried out by the Latvian anti-Semitic factions. Or 5,000 Jews were beat up and killed, their houses burned and synagogues vandalized, and 20,000 people were sent to forced labor camps outside of Riga. Things moved along very quickly because there was rising anti-Semitism even before the first, uh, Second World War in Latvia. So one month later, a ghetto was established with 30,000 people. Now, I want to point out to you something that recent research has uncovered. And that is that these atrocities were organized by the Germans, but they were willingly carried out by the Latvian fascist auxiliaries, which I mentioned, without necessarily direct German involvement. But seven months later, the worst atrocity occurred. This was the... Uh, the massacre at Rumbala. 25,000 Jews were marched to a forest outside of Riga where they were stripped, thrown into a pit, and shot. By 1944, the Jewish population in Latvia was almost decimated. Of the fewer than 100 Latvians that survived, over half of them were saved by these two individuals. Janis and Johanna Lipkis. So how did this happen? Well, like Imre Bathorsi, one day Janis Lipkis was walking down the street with his little son and he saw a man being beat up. Now most of us would have covered the child's eyes, turned him away and run home. No, Janis said to the boy, look well and never forget this. And at that point, I would say he had an epiphany. He decided, well, what can I do? He was working at that time as a stevedore, and he quit his job to take up a job with a consulting firm that was actually making aircraft parts for the uh, German Air Force. And they were using the slave labor in these labor camps. <clears throat> 